Now, let's go to Tuesday. See what Tuesday brought for us. My goodness, in a rhombus, one diagonal is twice the length of another. Boy, did I make a long problem or what for this day? Uh, if its perimeter is 40 inches, find the lengths of the two diagonals whew, to two decimal places. Blah, 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 blah. How about it? Let's see what we're going to do on this problem. It says, my goodness, we got, hey, we got a rhombus there. Now, everybody remember our rhombus, little things that go on. First of all, you got all four sides that are congruent. So if you know the perimeter, oh, by the way, if you know the perimeter, well, we know the perimeter. There's no if, and, or but about that. We're going to get it as 40. So that means we can drop 10 on each of these sides already, information that's important. What's the other piece of information? One diagonal is what? Twice the length of another. One to two ratio going on here. So, got the picture? Have you drawn the picture at home? Everybody got the picture at home? Nod. Go with me. Let's connect. Let's connect these things, all right? We'll move them right in here. And that's going to give me, it's going to give me a diagonal right there going across. And here comes another one. Oh, this is a pretty rhombus. You know, it was drawn very well. Thank you, computer, for doing that for us. And notice something about my diagonals. Since they really are, they're connecting vertices, they do a lot of great things here. First of all, they bisect each other. They bisect each other because of the parallelogram, all right? So they bisect each other and they form four sweet little congruent triangles there. Now, those four congruent triangles also have another really cool property. The diagonals having to be perpendicular. Now, that's not in every parallelogram, but it is in a rhombus and a square, all right? And by the way, a square is a rhombus. All rhombi are not necessarily squares, all right? And this is that case. You've got definitely no right angles in the actual figure itself. But we do have right angles where? I just mentioned perpendicular diagonals. So let's go ahead and find what's going on there. Beautiful, beautiful things happen there. Right triangles. Ah, right triangles. You say, okay, Ernie, take us a little further. I'll be glad to. Now, what we're going to talk about here is the fact, remember I said one diagonal is twice the length of another. And by the way, we know 10. Let's go ahead and put 10 up there. Isn't that pretty to know 10? Because we're going to do some Pythagorean theorem moments here in just a minute. What I'm going to do here, and everybody hang on to your hat here. Remember these are cut in half and these are cut in half? So I'm going to say, let's suppose this was, whole diagonal was 2x. Got it? That means what? x and x. So let's put an x and an x right there. Now, I, I did it because I don't really want to work with one half x. And most of you probably don't either, because a lot of you are going to say one half, you're going to, you're going to mess up on it, okay? <laughs> just, just trust me on that, because you'll put one half x squared instead of one half x times one half x. It's a lot easier, I think, to see this thing coming if we put two x. And then I'm going to laugh and say, you know, most of my students, I thought that would happen, and a lot of them forget what to do. So what did I say, two x and two x here? Why am I going to do that? Because I still want to keep that proportion one to two. I want to keep four x and two x, remember, one diagonal has got to be what? Twice the length of the other. So here we go. We've got this lovely right triangle relationship. I need to know x and then guess what? I'm going to double it. Uh, and then I'm going, to, whoo, I'm going to have to quadruple it. I'm going to have to multiply it by 4 to get me across that one or we'll deal with it. Okay, <laughs> we will deal with that. So let's go with it. a squared plus b squared, you got it, equals eh, 10 squared. All right. In this case, we're going to let x be a. But now I want you to be careful. And I had us write the formula down for a simple reason. The b is equal to 2x. And we're going to put that 2x right in there and we're going to square it out. Notice I put a parenthesis there. Notice you should have put a parenthesis there. If you didn't, you're going to end up with just 2x squared. And that's going to really get you a crazy answer and an incorrect one at that. So let's see what's going on here. I've got 100. That's easy. That part's easy. So once again, why did I go through that? I said 2x times 2x does not give me 2x squared. It gives me what? 4, 4, 4. So x squared plus 4x squared equals to, yes, 100. Now we're cooking. We have, ah, don't forget we have 1 there. Some of you are about to say, oh, you got 4x to the 4th. No, you do not. This is not multiplication at this point. It's addition. So we got 1 plus 4, which gives us, last time I checked, 5x squared, all right, equaling to 100. Let's bring it up here, and let's think about this a second. I've got 5x squared. You have 5x squared, and we have that equaling to 100. 
let's divide by 5 because basically what we're trying to do is get back to x by itself and 5 is hindering us a little bit. It's in multiplication so we're going to divide both sides by 5. It's going to give us x squared equaling to 20. Now one of the reasons we have this thing find the links to two decimal places, I know some of your teachers are going out there saying, why don't you make them find radicals? Why don't you get them in simple radical form? Well, we will. All right, I'll do that for you guys. And, and actually for me, I like it to be in radical form at times too. But unfortunately, when I'm out there measuring something, I say, I think that's two times the square root of five in length. No, none of us do that, right? If you do, don't tell me about it, all right? But uh, so what we're looking at here is x, we're going to square root both sides of this thing. And yes, as I said, it would equal 2 times the square root of 5. Now, some of you are saying, well, where'd you get that 2 times the square root of 5? 4 times 5 in there, and that's going to give us 2 times the square root of 5. Remember, the 4 is perfect square, comes out. There you go. And also, some of you say, well, it could be plus or minus, but you know what? We're talking length, so it's going to be positive. So now, let's just go to trusty calculator, and let's find out what that root of x, that uh, 20, square root of 20, is going to give us, all right? Whew. Uh, second. Hit the radical, pop in the 20. There we go. All right, there is an X. That's not the answer, is it? No, that's half a diagonal. So let's multiply it by two. Why not? That's why this thing's great. We don't have to recopy that. Okay, I, I'm, at, I'm at the first diagonal. And I'm going to go with, we said two decimal places, right? So we're going to go with eight and 94 hundredths because that was what it was working with. Now, to get our second one, second diagonal, I hope we're still on the page here with everybody. I think we are. Very good. We're going to double that one, okay? And it might, we'll see. We'll check. We'll check. We'll check. Everybody just get patient on me, all right? Let's multiply it by times two. And I am picking up about 17, and we're going to round that off, so we're going to round that up to the nearest hundredths, two pla decimal places. We're going to bump that up to a 9. So it looks like it's going to be 17 and 89 hundredths. Now remember again, that's a, an irrational number. It rambles on and on forever. So there are your links. If you want to really get fancy on me here, remember, you can go back and do Pythagorean checking here, but remember you got to go back to the x value, which was what? Um, half of this. I believe it was like, what, 4.47? So run that in there square and then run this thing in a square, and you should come back up to close to 100. So easy check there.